well. So today we're gonna to be working on my 2018 BMW X5M. What I'm doing is I'm gonna be replacing the, the uh, thermostat. I'm gonna go with the lower temperature, 95 degree thermostat. Pardon the fan noise, it's, it's super hot here today. So to remove the thermostat, actually I gotta remove the water pump because there's a bolt I cannot access. So I decided to go ahead and replace the water pump since we got a few miles on this uh, vehicle. So I got uh, antifreeze, I got distilled water, a couple belts, Conitec belts, and here are the uh, port numbers. I'm gonna go up close right quick. There's the water pump. Belt. So for the starts, we're gonna remove the engine cover, the intake, I got a dyna and intake on this. Um, it's gonna be a couple clamps out there, quarter inch clamps, and uh, the whole thing pretty much pulls off. Unplug the mass airphone sensors. A little tab, you gotta slide out the way. So now we gotta take this uh, cross brace off. It's just a couple 13s. There is a cable, a hood cable release going back there, as well as some wiring uh, attached to the back. So it's gonna be fairly easy. One. So now this is what we got for now. It's the brace out. We got to remove this um, engine cooling fan out of the way. It's not gonna be too bad to remove. So you got this water line going crossways. It just unsnaps here, here, there. And then, let's see. Focus, focus. Okay, this is the, what holds the, the place right there, the part right there is what holds it in a, in place, you gotta unsnap that right there. And the same is gonna be on the other side as well. Okay, so I got the fan out of the way. It was a little bit of a challenge, nothing too crazy. So something to pay attention to, there is that plug. There's the fan plug on top and there's another, like a wiring harness that's attached to the fan. And there's also, okay, so this little, Yes, and this, uh, the top hose is also was snapped into the fan. So these are the side, side ears on the fan that, that's held to the car. But otherwise, it's pretty much it. The fan's out of the way. There's that water pump. We well, still got a little ways, a good ways to go. Okay, so I checked, just checked at the bottom of the radiator. I do not see a drain plug, unfortunately. It might be there somewhere, but I just do not see it. I dropped the belly pan and I don't see anything. So at this point, we're gonna loosen this focus, this um, hose. I guess it goes to one of the turbo um, cooling lines. And we're gonna loosen this sensor there. And I will probably 
start taking this uh, taking this belt off. Okay, so for the sensor, we just got to press that metal tab, and it pretty much gonna release. There you go. The connector is loose. Now on this uh, hose, it's basic metal clip that we're just gonna lift up and it should slide right off. And then it's gonna make a mess. So I'm gonna go grab a pan and we're gonna pull it. Okay, so with the uh, one sensor out of the way as well as the turbo coolant lines, we got this lower radiator hose. It's right there in the middle and the sensor right above it. Sensor unplugged the same way, it's gonna be uh, just a metal clip. We press it down, pull the sensor off and the that lower hose will you just need to slide that metal retaining clip up and uh, it should slide off as well. So this is what we add with this for now. Okay. Then we got this little piece there left, the one that's actually leaking on my car. It's sipping, I guess. And that rubber hose, I'm probably gonna replace it with a coolant hose while I'm at it. So this is, you know, the space is, there's no room in there to unclip this top sensor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, remove this electric water pump. It should be fairly easy to do. It's gonna be a couple of torches, which appears to be maybe T27s or so. And this connector here, and I'm just gonna put it all the way on top and out of the way. It should give me some room to work with out there. So I'm just gonna unsnap this clip. There you go. I'll hook it. Come on! Yeah, I guess I've never been off. Okay, I'm gonna need both hands for this, but this is you pretty much got that. Small update. For me to access the lower radiator hose, there is two pressure converters. The one responsible for building vacuum for the turbos, you know, from the uh, from the engine. So I will be doing a turbo job in a couple of weeks. I will be going with the pure stage one turbos. So all this obviously gonna be disassembled, but I'm gonna be, I was, I planned on replacing vacuum lines as well as pressure converters. This is, I got two of them. But since right now everything is wide open and I kinda, it would be nice to have them out of the way to um, loosen the lower radiator hose that snaps onto the water pump. I'm just gonna go ahead with this job. I will uh, replace, there's two of them, they kinda sit in you know, reverse order. Um, there's a couple 10 millimeters and a plug. And it's gonna be the same way on the other side as well. And here is the part number for the pressure converter made by Peterberg. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the same thing the same company who builds um, factory factory ones. And here's the new vacuum line. I got it from Auto House. I think it is a three, three and a half millimeter, I think. So I got a bunch, I got like two or three meters of it. So it should be enough for the vacuum line. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna undo those uh, tins. There's gonna be one on top and should be one on the bottom. I'm gonna get this out of the way and try to remove the other uh, piece as well, or the whole bracket. And otherwise, it's gonna be a belt and a couple lines on the side and the water pump will be out. Okay, so as I mentioned uh, before, this is a new pressure converter. This is the old one. They are identical. So this is covered by a sticker. Kerberg, um, you know, they just, de there's decal over this, but otherwise they are, I'm pretty confident they are identical. So this is the same part, with just one third of the cost, but this is it. Um, so yeah, long story short, they are the same parts. I had to change of plans. It's a four millimeter hose, vacuum hose. So I got a thick wall, four millimeter silicone hose. And uh, that should work. I got one converter out and uh, work. I'm gonna work on getting the other one off. And then I'm gonna try to replace those lines. They go to the turbo actuators and that's, that's pretty much it. After that, we're gonna pull it. All right, fellas, just wanna give you a heads up. Uh, that would save you some time. There's no need to, sorry, man, it's getting guys cutting grass. There's no need to remove that intercooler to 
to actually uh, access the other bracket bolt, I pretty much bend it out of the way and you can access the secondary pressure converter bolts. You will see studs right there. From the other side pressure converter. Once you get in it, if you decide to replace this, it's actually, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. So pretty much you just bend the bracket out of the way and swap out the pressure converters and vacuum lines and then put it pretty much back. And this is where the bolt goes. I think it's T27. So yeah, but now I got a full access to the um, radiator hose and I'm gonna start taking the belt and these two pipes off and we pretty much got a water pump. Alrighty, so here's the pump. Here is the belt tensioner. Okay, so it's taking T60 uh, Torx bit, the biggest bit in my kit. And you pretty much, I think you're gonna move it, you're gonna need a big breaker bar and you're gonna move it clockwise, we'll see. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be clockwise. And we're gonna take the belt. Okay, so we're just taking out all these bolts. I'm gonna get an extension, but it's gonna be a, a few bolts all around, different lengths, just pay attention which one goes where. You can actually put them in the new pump, so you know. Pump should be loose, kinda of stuck on there. I'm just gonna give it light, light pry. Nothing too crazy, don't wanna break things. It's a good price spot right there, very lightly. Hey, it sounds like a waterfall. So pretty much gonna rock it back and forth and it's gonna come come off. All right, fellas, so this pipe, uh, sorry, the water pump definitely gave me, gave me a workout. So uh, these two pipes on the right, which are silver and black pipes, uh, the top is uh, the upper radiator hose and the other one would be, I'm not sure where it's going to. So anyway, uh, they were just, them, them rubber seal, rubber O-rings were straight up stuck on it. So it took a lot of persuasion, a lot of leverage, you know, leveraging just, you know, I usually, once O-rings uh, or a gasket gets stuck, I usually use like a rubber uh, treatment. It usually loops things up and, and doesn't damage the uh, rubber O-ring. So I sprayed the, I sprayed a lot of it there and let it sit for a couple of minutes and then just work it work 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 it out and here we are we got two water pumps uh it's hard to tell in the picture when you spin it you got that like a clicking noise so i'm pretty sure it's still gonna last for a while but i'm glad i am replacing it i'm primarily re replacing it because of the thermostat because it is super hard to remove the thermostat without removing the water pump. So might as well, if you got it over the car, it's my mileage, might as well just get it done. So this is it. Uh, I'm gonna clean up all the maintenance surface surfaces. I'm gonna swap out the AC belt and I'm gonna start putting things together. Uh, so here's a little trick for the stretch be belt install. The AC belt right there is a stretch belt. There's no separate tensioner for it. So a lot of people use a special tool and I, I got a special tool as well. Well, first of all, uh, you know, to remove the old belt, I pretty much cut it. But here's the install tool for the belt. Remove and install. But it doesn't work in this application because the AC clutch sticks out so far as well as um, there's a grooves for the regular belt. So this pretty cool stuff here is actually, see the arrow kind of looking on the, on the left. I remove all the bolts. There's a, I think E12 or E14 external torx bolts. I remove them. This is the last bolt right there. And actually the pulley will slide where, towards where the arrow is. So it will allow you the slack 
I will show you just right now. So I'm gonna remove the last bolt. It's actually a pretty cool thing I just learned just a second ago myself. They will slide, but it will still stay on a on a pulley, uh, on the on the main uh, balancer. So you see, it slides and it allows for the slack to install the uh, stretch belt. So what you do is you, you will throw this uh, stretch belt on. I think I need to uh, actually start it here. I put the stretch belt here and uh, run it over the AC compressor. And then you use the big socket, which is, I'm using 11, one and, one and one sixteenth, but I think it's actually 27 millimeter, but we're just kind of rigging things up here for now. And we're gonna turn the engine, it, it's gonna turn um, clockwise looking at it. We're gonna turn the engine over and that pulley will stretch the belt and it will move in its place and once the arrow is not to remove the to install the belt the arrow got to face the uh, AC compressor but to uh, actually tighten those external torx bolts back up the the uh, arrow got to be facing the other direction the opposite direction so it's actually pretty cool and I'm sure I hope it's gonna help a lot of y'all instead of fighting here with a screwdriver chance and damaging the pulleys chance and damaging the belt we are actually in good shape now. Okay, so uh, more heads up about this stretch belt. So once you get the arrow, you know, uh, facing the AC compressor, I strongly recommend putting the belt over the main pulley, like, you know, the uh, these grooves, and then just use your fingers, and I kind of use this plastic wedge to uh, throw it over, kind of work it on the, um, on the AC compressor. If you try to go the other way, it's, it's not gonna work. It's Believe me, I've been fighting here and sweating for 20 minutes. So yes, uh, get the arrow lined up, you know, towards the compressor, uh, loosen all the four, all four of these e torques It will slide, put the belt on the main pulley, then work the belt onto the uh, AC compressor, and then rotate it 180 degrees. This arrow gotta be uh, opposite way from the compressor. And you're gonna install those bolts back in, and you're good to go. Everything else is gonna be straightforward, hopefully. All right, fellas, so here we are. We got water pump. I just got back from lunch. So, water pump surface is clean. I'm gonna lube all the O rings and all this uh, inside of all those uh, plastic pipes uh, for the water pump to go on, slide on easier. Um, the main pulley with those e torxes uh, it's I spun it 180 degrees away from the uh, AC compressor and I got all these four tightened crisscross pattern and uh, so we're gonna loop this thing up and we pretty much gonna be ready to install the water pump in just a few uh, I believe I'm gonna double check but I think the torques on the um, water pump bolts is uh, 10 Newton meters they they not tight at all but I'm gonna double check. If it's different, I'm gonna uh, update you. All right, I'm gonna go back. Right, so those bolts that are three bolts below water pump that's not visible, the short bolts, it could be pretty challenging because you cannot see them. It's a small trick, I'm sure most of y'all know, but I put paper inside the socket so that the bolt sits in the socket kind of tight so it doesn't fall out, out of your socket. So this will make your life much, much easier because it doesn't, it doesn't, Pull out, just stays there firm. All right, so I'm almost done installing the water pump. All right, I know I'm slacking making videos on, on the assembly, but it's it's pretty much straightforward. Uh, I got the belt on. Here's the way the uh, belt looks. And I got all my new vacuum lines to all those uh, pressure seal no solenoids. So they kind of go in right there. I removed the turbo inlet. And two of them go to the waste gate to the waste gates and uh, one goes all the way to this line if there's a T back there. So otherwise, yes, yeah, so all the new lines, all new vacuum lines, they are four millimeter silicone, uh, really thick wall hoses, vacuum hoses. Uh, we use thick wall because if it's gonna be regular size uh, silicone, it's probably gonna collapse under vacuum, under high temperature and vacuum. This one should be just fine. So um, at this point, I got everything put together. I'm gonna throw this electric pump that goes back there. Uh, and I'm gonna either replace or probably gonna do something about the hose that connects right there. 
I got to, uh, I'm gonna probably install a new hose. Otherwise, everything's easy peasy. We are putting it together at this point. I'm sorry my phone died so I got pretty much everything buttoned up just ready for the intake I got the brace on I got the fan on fan been fighting me uh, just make sure your plugs are in and the fan is spinning freely there's nothing in the way uh, make sure all the hoses run it right um, I use those just warm clamps till uh, next week probably hopefully next week I will be installing my turbos, the pure one, pure stage one turbos. So just you know, maybe comment if you want to see a more detailed video. Or the way it is, it's pretty good. Uh, I only got so much time. I actually got full time job and baby on the way. So I'm just trying to, you know, help the community much as much as I can. But this is uh, this is where we at with the water pump replacement, pressure converters, vacuum lines, and belts. So we actually did a good bit today. I'm gonna throw the intake on, shouldn't take but just a minute. I don't see any leaks under the car as of yet, but you know, you gotta bring it up to temp, of course. Uh, the car is designed to bleed on itself, but you know, just keep an eye on it and obviously just check the coolant level for, you know, a few more trips, a few next trips. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna go get the intake on, uh, get those clamps tight and see what happens. I'm gonna crank it up. All right, fellas, so I got the car running. That's the old antifreeze. As doesn't seem to be any leaks as of right now. Uh, I'm waiting for thermostat to open. But at this point, everything seems to be pretty good. Uh, just a couple things to mention. Uh, I run my coolant, my antifreeze, uh, about 60 to 40, 60 water, you know, distilled water, uh, 40 actual coolant. Uh, I live in a hot climate, you know, I live in Louisiana, so it's it's stupid hot here. Right now it's probably 110. Um, another thing I want to mention is definitely for the first few days, keep an eye on the coolant level. You know, every time you, take, you drive somewhere, just pop it open and carefully, of course, and just check the coolant level. Uh, all in all, no bad of a job. I would say probably six, seven hours. Uh, it took me a minute to get those pressure converters pressure solenoids and the uh, new vacuum lines ran and cut and trimmed and just takes a few minutes, a few extra minutes. Uh, not bad of a job, but definitely you gotta know what you're doing because this here is, uh, yeah, it's no joke. Um, so as I mentioned before, we did belts, we did uh, blue solenoids, vacuum lines, and we also done water pump and a low temperature thermostat, lower temperature thermostat. I got my thermostat from ECS tuning, I think. And it should run it, it should open at 95 degrees, which I'm gonna, you know, get in the menu and actually see where, where we at temperature wise. Um, the Y is no better of a job, and hopefully, somebody, you know, someone of y'all gonna, gonna be able to use this uh, step by step. I think I did fairly detailed process, so y'all enjoy and be safe out there.